Hi, um, thank you guys for having me. I know that this is officially a design meetup, but I do have um, a little bit of tips for designers, and I've been asked to share them with you guys. Um, I am local, but you guys probably notice I have a British accent, which makes me kind of half foreign. So I'm like sort of in the game. I'm sort of a designer, I'm sort of local, so that's why I'm here. Um, so when I was 12 years old, I decided I wanted to live with my father and my dad lived in the UK and so I moved in there and you know when you're a teenage girl you want to get a new room um, I wanted everything to be pink and purple and I wanted glitter I'm out of that phase now my room is not purple but I saw this beautiful like beautiful white shelf and I wanted it so badly and it was from Ikea so I told my dad I really want this shelf and I said to him can we buy it like I want it and so we did and you know, it arrived and I was so excited about it and we started building it together, like putting the pieces together and I'm really hot tempered, like I have a short fuse and so does my dad. And so, you know, we went back and forth and, you know, there was a lot of like shouting, but it was, it was you know, it was father daughter bonding time and it was beautiful. The shelf was finished and I got, like, I got it in my room and I looked at it and I said, oh my God, there's a huge piece of wood missing and four screws. Right, so my shelf was half broken, even though it was built. And it made me think, like, we had all of the parts, we had the instructions, yet we built something which was essentially useless. And that's what people do with copywriting a lot of the time. You guys, as designers, have all of these skills, and you know all of this information, yet you still manage to build something which is useless. Why? because you're not thinking about it logically. You're not looking at it in a logical way. So in the next 15 minutes, I'm gonna change the way that you guys think about copy and you're gonna love it. You're gonna can't wait to write your next copy. So what are we gonna learn? We're gonna learn three important things. We're gonna learn how to have a conversation with your customer. We're gonna learn why actually customers write better copy so you can relax and stop worrying about your English mistakes and all these little things. And we're gonna learn how you're gonna grab that customer's story. How are you gonna get it? How are you gonna find out the real information that you need for your product? So let's get started with how to have a conversation with your customers. I want you guys to be a hand up if today you went into the supermarket and you bought something, anything. Really? Only three people? Do you guys eat? <laughs> no? Okay. Um, I want you to put your hand up if today you told someone something about your day. Good, you're very like, quiet. Oh, good. I'm, well, I knew you would. Um, so there we go. I want you to put your hand up if you are the type of person who likes to put hands up at conferences. No? Oh, okay, there's a few people. All right. So what we have established, that although you are a quiet bunch, all of you are actually capable of having a conversation. So why aren't you having this conversation with your customers? Let me put it into perspective. If somebody came up to me and they said, what is your product about? And I went, we have 20,000 users. Okay, and then they came up to me and then they said, how much does your product cost? And I said, oh, we offer 14 free features. That's odd, that's not a conversation. I'm just throwing information at this person. And even though this information is really useful, it's not answering their question. So here it is. Every conversion is a conversation. It's all about answering the questions that your customers are asking you. And I know it sounds really simple, but let me just walk you through it. First thing you need, you need to know is what a customer is looking for. So let's have a look at, they come to your website, what do they want? What do leads look for? Leads look for what is your product? Who is it for? In other words, is it for me? Like, what does it do? Why should I care? How does it work? Why should I trust you? In other words, why should I buy your product and not someone else's? And what do I do next? Like, what's the CDA? What am I doing? So let me bring you back to my IKEA shelf, right? So me and my dad had all of this, because if you guys have ever built anything from IKEA, it's really simple. You get all of the instructions, you have all the parts. So we're like, where do we go wrong? We didn't know how to do this. We didn't know how to answer the questions. You guys want to shake one? I didn't know. We didn't know how to answer the questions in the right order. And, and this is trickier than it looks, right? Because the first thing you guys need to be answering is, why should I care? And it might not be the most obvious, but it's the most important. Because the people, when they come to your website, when they want to buy your product, they want to find out why. Like, why are they coming there? The next one, what is it and who is it for? In other words, is it for me? Why should I care? And is this something that I want to buy? When you've answered that, you've done your job. 
You don't answer those things, you lose. That's it. Your lead is gone, you don't get that conversion, you're not having the conversation, you've got in for milk and you've come out with a banana, okay? So you really need to be focusing on the logic. The next part, you know, looking at the body, you need to be focused on how will your life improve, how does your product work, and why should I trust you? The trust you bit is always the nice, you know, the nice testimonials, the nice reviews, the really like happy, happy butterflies that people say about your product. And then finally, the CDA, what, is, where, what do we go next? Do we sign up? Do we leave you the email? What happens next? All right, so you guys have all the right questions, you have all the right order, but you're still missing something. I'm gonna ask you one more thing. Who here has ever worked with personas? Who's created a, like a user persona? All right, we got more, more hands up. Okay, cool, I'm impressed. Um, so I love user personas, and I'm gonna tell you about a couple. So here's Mary, Mary's 40 years old. Um, bless little Mary, she lives with 10 cats, and all her cats are beautiful, her favorite one's Gilbert. She also likes to bake cherry pies um, in her spare time and she loves to knit. Then there's Blake. Blake loves going to the gym. Like Blake's at the gym every single day, seven days a week. The other thing he loves doing is taking photos of his abs and posting them on Instagram and Facebook. All right, so do you guys feel like you have enough information about Blake and Mary? Nodding? Yeah? Okay. Maybe, but you're missing one most important thing, the, motiva like the motivation, why? Why do they care? Why do you care? Why do they want to go to the product? Why do they want to buy your product? Why are they coming to you? What's the motivation? Why is Blake so obsessed with Facebook and his abs? Why is it, maybe he needs more gym gear, so he's coming to buy gym gear from you. Why? You need to be focused on why they're frustrated, what are they worried about, what are their needs, essentially, um, what do they wish they could do? And very often when we create these personas, they're actually people we wish, we like really wish our customers were. They're not real people. And we try and shove the customers into this outline and we're convinced that we're doing the right thing. But we're forgetting the why, the big why. How do we do that? How do we find out what it is that they're actually after? Well, we look at these things. We look at their pain points. We look at their anxieties, and then obviously we look at priorities. So not all pain points and not all anxieties are equal, right? Sometimes we have things that, you know, they're more important to us, some things we're worried about a little bit more, and so we need to be able to prioritize. And then finally, we look at the outcomes. Why are they coming to us? What for? What are they looking for, essentially? So we have, you know, so now we're getting there. We're like in these past 10 minutes, we've got it. We've got the order. We know what questions we're answering. We know the why, you know, we're on the right track, but we're still writing really terrible copy. Why? Because customers are actually so much better at writing copy than every single one of us. And that doesn't mean that I'm out of a job as a copywriter and a marketer, but it just means that I need to listen to my customers. So I'm going to show you a few examples. All right. Sales made simple. This just sounds like a really terrible alliteration. Some kind of marketer is thinking, oh, I know, I'm gonna make S sounds and write something down that makes, that sounds really cool. Like, you know, like, save time and money. And then you look into the distance. No one understands what that is, right? You hate guesswork and busy work, so we made sales less work. That's something that a customer wrote about this product. And how, like, can you guys, what can you relate to more? The thing that actually makes sense, that you can understand. Because the point isn't about using really fancy words and throwing them about your homepage where people think, what, what does that mean? The point is to tell people what it is that you do and your customers know that better. Here's another example. Affordable time tracking versus payroll software. Who understands what that is? Does anyone understand what it is? No, I have no idea what that is, honestly. I, like, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I, I would probably just buy it to see what it is. What am I buying? What am I affording here? Essentially, it's a time tracking tool that pays for itself. And that's what a customer said. Here's another one. This, this, one, this is probably my favorite. Breakthrough native reporting limitations. Native reporting limitations. I've studied in England for six years. I have no idea what native reporting limitations are. What is it? It's a report. Um, that your CRM can't give you. It's that simple. You're using a CRM and it can't give you a report and this product is gonna get you that report. Easy, right? So, 
you need to let your customers do some of the heavy lifting. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to let them do that. But how do we do that? How do we get that customer story? You know, how do we really get in touch with the customers? How do we speak to them? There are a few ways. So we can do that through customer interviews, we can do it through email surveys, we can do it for reviews and testimonials. And the reason I've highlighted the, the customer interviews, which is in green, is because I personally feel like that's the best way of doing that. So for example, you know, I could come up to you and be like, hi, and speak to him in person, and like, we'd get to know each other. And then I could come up to you and speak to you, and we'd be, really, you know, we'd be close and stuff. But then if like, I tweeted someone over there, and I was like, hey, dude, you like, look really nice in your green jacket or whatever, it wouldn't be the same impression, right? So when you're talking to someone one to one, or when you're really close to someone, then you can actually understand your customers better. But that's sometimes not the option, right? So you need to be able to test stuff. In all three of these scenarios, you need to be focusing on one important thing, and that is the narrative, okay? If there's one thing you guys remember from this presentation, it's this. Don't ask your customer about their opinion. Ask your customer about their experience, okay? If your customer says to you, oh, you know what, I don't really like that blue color that you're using on your product, or your mascot has really funny eyes. That's not going to help you improve your product or write your copy. You need to be asking them about their experience. What happened before? Like, what's the cause of them coming to you? What's happening to them during using your product and then after? And very often, people forget the after part. Like, what happens after they finish using your product? How has your product changed their life? That is gold in copy, literally. How do we do that? We need to ask the right questions. You see where we're going here? We're conversing. We know, we know the questions. We know what to ask now. What was going on in your business that sent you looking for a solution? What was the problem? What problem did you have that you wanted to find a solution for that you came to us? Easy. Here is another one. What else did you try and what didn't you love about it? A lot of the time, people will stop at what else did you try? And that's it. But you want to keep asking further, what didn't you love about it? What was the one thing that you didn't like about them and you found with us? Because that's the thing that makes you different. And that's the thing that's going to make you stand out. And you should put that in writing. What almost kept you from buying from us? Now, this is a little bit of a daring one. I, uh, I call this the daredevil question because a lot of the time people don't like to ask negatives. But it's really good to find out what's the one thing that's holding people back from actually buying your product. And here's the positive version of that. What made you confident enough to, to buy our product, to come to us? What's the one thing, you know, you saw it and then you said, ha, ah, these guys make sense. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to sign up. This is great material. Now, what made, and then blank, so insert your, your product name, so for me, Manage WP, the best solution for you? Why, why are we different? Why are we the one, the one product that you want to be with? What differentiates us? Another one. When evaluating and then insert your product, for me again, manage WP, what was the most important to, like, what was most important to you? Was it a feature? Was it the fact that you know we had a great customer happiness team? Was it what was it that what was so important to you when you were using a product? What made you stay essentially? And here it is. It's the thing that I was telling you guys earlier. Don't forget the after part. So you've got why people came to you, why they're using your product, and don't forget to ask them what's changed, what's different. So what can you do now or do better than you could before? Like, how is your life better? What makes, what makes our product so important to you? And this is the final one. Give me an example of when, insert blank, your product made a difference for you. All of these questions are actually helping your customer tell you their story of how they came to you, what was it they were worried about, their motivation, how they're using our product, and how their lives are much better afterwards. Now, I want to show you this example because this is the one I worked on personally. So Kerry, does, she's an influencer in our industry, and I worked with her on a couple of interviews. We did uh, blog interviews and UX interviews, but from one interview, uh, I managed to get all of this. Top right corner, um, is a blog po post by Kerry, so I wrote it, but um, interviewing her, and she's a freelancer, and so she talks about the, the difficulties of freelancing, and a lot of our clients are freelancers, and they use our tools. So this was brilliant, because a lot of people came to it and said, hey, this is another person who does exactly my job, and she's using Manage WP. 
Isn't that cool? I could be doing that. I could be Carrie Dills. Top right, and I can see my colleague there who does paid marketing. He used this ad to, for paid marketing campaigns. Brilliant. Why? Like one of the themes that we have is saving time. So why would I just say, "Hey, save time"? Why not put someone who actually thinks that it's a huge time saver? Brilliant. Bam. Whole different story. Here at the bottom, we did a case study, which is also on our website. And what's interesting about this case study is that you get actual statistics. So she talks about actual statistics, what, like how much in percentages did Manage WP help her? So she saved 40% of her time just using our product. And so we're getting this theme, and it's not just us marketers sitting, you know, I'm not just sitting there behind my desk, like writing, hey, save time and Manage WP. I'm actually asking someone to tell me what is it like, what, what's, what's her impression, and finally, this is a testimonial which we use on our home page and we use it various other material, like promotional material. So for one interview, you guys can get four fantastic different types of copy that you can use. And so no longer can you say, I'm a designer, I can't write copy. Yes, you can. Of course you can, because your customers are doing the heavy lifting and you guys are just sitting there and listening to them. And this is it, and I'm sure you guys have heard this before, but you are not your customer. And we often make this mistake. I make it all the time. I've made it two weeks ago, and I've been in this industry for a couple of years just on this one product, right? Because what, what I think is really important and what I'm really proud of, of our engineers, and I'm thinking these guys have worked on incremental backups for years, and they're amazing, and I try and market that, and then customers come back to us, and they're like, but the best thing you guys do is, is updates. And I'm thinking, what? We've spent two years doing one thing. Why are you coming to us for updates? But that's why they come to us, and then they pick and like something else. So often I make the mistake of marketing the wrong thing. And you know, I've been burnt, so I've learned. Make sure you remember you are not your customer, and just listen to them. And when you can't, um, you can ask for help from others. Now, you don't have to actually read this. Um, just look at the different colors in this email, and now I'm going to shame myself publicly, and this actually happened 10 days ago. Uh, we were writing an email for our customers because we we're shutting down one program, and we're opening up a new, another one, so, and uh, I wrote this really high-end email trying to explain how, you know, this new platform is just, we're so high-end, we're so secure, we're just so smooth, and I sent it to my customer happiness team, and they destroyed me. They absolutely destroyed me. They, they were like, what is this? No one understands what you're saying. You're not addressing anyone. You're not speaking a language that anyone understands. And they completely ruined my copy. And they sent me home with nothing. And I had to redo everything. Right? So you need to check yourself. A lot of the time, you think you know things. But you know, if you don't have the chance to speak to your customers on an everyday basis, if you're working on an international online platform, make sure you check with someone who does. And customer team, customer happiness teams are just fantastic for this kind of thing. Um, but if you do get a chance to get in touch with your customers, you can do it at different things. You can do it at events. You know, I love and going and I go to speak at different events. I do customer interviews. I speak to them all the time. Um, you can do it at co-working spaces like this one to here today. For example, you work with a lot of freelancers. Otherwise. Um, I'm going to shame myself one more time, and that's it, I'm done, um, is social media, which I am also terrible at. Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen my Twitter account. I tweet um, once a month, maybe. So if you're good at social media, social media is a fantastic way of getting in touch with people that you're working with. Um, Facebook pages, Facebook groups, all this kind of thing, it's gold material. And lucky for me, I have people who are really good at that. I love doing that, so I can hand that bit off. But it, I always find really useful information of what our customers want, what are they looking for, and they're happy to share it. So use that. All right, um, I'm only going to keep you a little bit longer. I just wanted to give you a couple of examples that are pretty famous, just to prove my point. So how do other brands do it? So you guys, all of you are familiar with Airbnb stories, which made a huge difference to Airbnb because it allowed them to humanize the brand. It was hosts writing stories. You know, it came from the heart. It really, it really connected people. It made them want to go there. Um, and they did exactly that. They didn't bother trying to describe the city or the apartment. They let the hosts do it. And it worked tremendously. Uh, one for the ladies. Who here has ever bought a Dove product? If you're a guy, you can put your hand up as well. Oh, okay, so just guys. All right, so we'll switch that. This one's for the guys. Um, although I see, you have a beard, I feel like all my examples are for you. Um, so the, the Dove, okay, well, anyway, I'll, uh, the Dove ones is great because um, 
it's like it, the marketing is fantastic because it's for every woman, right? They did this whole thing where it's like, oh, it doesn't matter what shape you are, what size you are, what color you are, you're beautiful. It's it's so relevant, and, and all women. I go and buy Dove products, and I don't even know why I'm buying them. I mean, I don't even like some of the other flavors or colors I like more. But I'm thinking, no, 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 no. This is for every woman. I'm every woman. I'm going to buy this. And it's so smart. Um, because it's so relevant and it, they made it about the people and so what they did is when they did that whole branding thing they did dove stories and they had women write about you know from all, all around the world uh, write about their stories and it worked so well okay and this is the one for the guys now I don't know if you guys have noticed but beards are actually very fashionable they're very cool so all the guys here with beards I commend you um, but essentially, uh, there's lots of different beard products that have come out. And um, it's interesting because now I sit with my guy friends and a lot of them like smell beautifully. They smell better than me. And I come up to them, I'm like, what is that? And they're like, oh, it's my, it's my beard. I have oil here. I've put oil here and I put this and this perfume. This perfume for beer now. But anyways, um, this, these guys are fantastic because this is so smart, right? What they do is they get you on their website and then they ask you to take a quiz. And they ask you, like, what kind of beard man are you? Did you know there was different types of beard men? It's, it's genius. And so all these guys are doing these quizzes and be like, oh, yes, yes, this is, this is me. I fit into this category. And then they offer you products and they're like, oh, you're category A. And then they give you all these products. And I swear to God, it's worked every single time for every single of my friends. They all come back and they're like, what kind of guy are you? What category do you fit into? And what products do you get? It's genius. Because they're actually making it about the people. They're asking the customers to tell them what do they want. And it's, it's not even that difficult. It's just being about the customer. All right. So to bring you back to my IKEA story right at the beginning where I was telling you about my shelf. Do you guys remember? Yeah? Um, it's funny because when I finished this whole speech, um, I realized that IKEA d does this so beautifully um, because their whole brand is about, you know, it's made for people. And they do this huge thing about how it's important how people influence the furniture. Um, in other words, for you to connect with it, as in build it. So they actually, I mean, it's really simple. I don't know if you guys have ever built anything. It's really simple to build, but it's that moment. And it's so true because the moment that me and my dad built that shelf, um, was one that I remember and it was like a while back. I'm not going to tell you exact date because then you'll work out how old I am, but it is a while back. And now it's in my room and the gap is still there, which is filled by the English Oxford Dictionary, which obviously I've never used, but it's in my room. And it's standing there and I'm looking at it. And I realized that they've been doing this for years. They've made the whole product, the whole initiative about the people. And so, especially you guys as designers who are so good at making everything so beautiful, and you guys can actually make interface emotional, which I've, and I've seen like designers I work with do that, which I could never do. Um, you, you all are so worried about writing copy, and you have all of the material. You've got the skills, you've got your customers, you just have to talk to them and let them know um, that you're listening and use that. And that's it. And you're going to be writing high converting copy. All right? Okay, thank you very much.